Hey, it's Jason from Bohemia Bees, and we are in the shop today, and we are going to do a review and talk about BVACs. Uh, what are BVACs, uh, and why do you need a vacuum for bees? I'm sure you've all seen the guys on Duck Dynasty vacuum up the bees or the, the wasps, uh, what they were trying to collect up. But in the, uh, the craft of beekeeping, there is a tool that's used commonly for those that do uh, cutouts or bee removals. So typically when a, a bee colony uh, swarms or splits and leaves its hive uh, due to swarming purposes, swarming reasons, and we'll put a video in the link below that talks about uh, ways to catch those swarms uh, and the benefits of swarming. Uh, but unfortunately, in the case where a swarm is not caught, they're gonna look for a cavity to move into. It could be the cavity of a tree. It could be another swarm trap that you put out to catch them. It could be some other place that's not desirable, which is in the eave of a house and a wall or some other type of structure that you will have to then remove the bees. Um, this usually is becomes a nuisance to the homeowner or the business that has these bees that have moved in, uh, thus creating something called a cutout. Uh, naturally, most beekeepers will uh, provide a free service to remove bees if they're a swarm on a branch, much like this. However, if those bees do move in and they need to be removed and it looks more like this, then you have to do a cutout. And a cutout is a little more complicated. It takes a lot more time. It's a lot messier. Um, and it's just, it's just be, you have to be a lot more careful when you're removing those bees. There are a lot of great videos out there uh, from you know, uh, 628 Dirt Rooster, uh, Randy. Uh, you also have uh, Mr. Ed. You also have Yappy the Bee Man, uh, JP. Uh, all of these beekeepers that do these great video series on cutouts and removals. Uh, I'll put the links to their YouTube channels in the description below. Go check them out uh, because they're really fun to watch. It's fun to watch those. We have a few videos also that we've done cutouts. We don't do as many cutouts a year uh, just because of the time and just the size of our operation we just really haven't been able to do that and there's not as many in our area necessarily um, as maybe down uh, in the bayou or down in south and that area of the country where the cutouts are, are very common with the amount of bees and bee colonies that do um, swarm out and, and move into structures down there so going back to our initial purpose for this video um, and before i go any further and show you these great bee vacs behind me Make sure you hit that subscribe button down there. That helps us out, it helps us grow our channel, it helps us get a bigger audience. Whether you have time to watch all of our videos or not, at least when you subscribe, we're then picked up in that YouTube algorithm and allows us to get more content out to other people that may want to see our videos but don't because we're not one of the larger YouTube channels, but we're growing. So thank you for all the support up to now um, and thank you for subscribing, liking, commenting, following, whatever you can do to help support us. There's even that little heart button down there you want to click on that you don't have to but making a donation helps us keep doing what we're doing making these videos beekeeping is not my full-time job yet uh, but it is a, a job that is, I'm very passionate about it's a craft and a hobby that I'm very passionate about as I've always said at the end of my videos it's more of an obsession more than a hobby uh, but let's get back to the business of why we are here let's talk a little bit about the bee uh, and why would you use a bee vac um, in a situation where you have bees inside of a cavity of a structure, those bees have built comb. So they naturally have the honeycomb, the brood comb that gets stuck in those in, in, the, in the rafters of a house or stuck in a cavity, and you have to remove it. The beekeeper has to go in and remove it. Uh, hopefully that's uh, an accessible area, somewhere you can get to. A lot of cutouts are very difficult because you have to do some, you have to be sort of a surgeon, so to speak. And cut into that wall or cut into that cavity of the house and reach your hand deep inside where thousands of bees are working and living uh, and potentially going to get very aggressive because you're basically tearing apart their home. Uh, but you have to get them out. If you don't get those bees out of that cavity, you're going to have bigger problems later on. If the homeowner or the business sprays the bees and they die, well then you have all that honeycomb that's going to start to break down and drip uh, and either create uh, issues within the structure of the home. It could also attract other pests like mice and cockroaches. You don't want that. Uh, we do When we do a few cutouts, we do see some pests as well that live um, homogeneously. I guess that's the right word. Uh, they live together with some of the, the, the honeybee nest that's there. The bees keep their nest clean 
and any of the droppings that fall on the ground, sometimes the other pests will take care of those droppings. However, uh, we also know that cutouts need to happen, removals need to happen because that bee cat, that bee colony cannot stay there. It's just not, it's not a, it's not a proper home to manage those bees, uh, unlike being in an apiary in a box. So what behind, what I have behind me are two examples of bee vacs. This is a home built bee vac that I made, and I'll walk through how I built it, where I got the concepts from, uh, and the one on my right over here, or your left. Uh, would be the uh, everything bee vac from all my bees. Now this this is a a, uh, a very nicely made quality made model, handmade actually, uh, by um, all my bees, and they produce these uh, for the beekeeping community to be able to use them for bee removals if you so choose. If you're the hobbyist, all the way up to someone who does bee removals every day potentially, this equipment has been tested uh, so that, and we'll talk about how this is, works and what's different about this versus something like this. Let's start with the, uh, the BVAC you see on your right, which is, is the, um, the traditional, what I would define as the Colorado style BVAC, or the Colorado, it's based off of the Colorado style BVAC. Uh, I'll try to find a link in the description below if I can see the original of someone who's demonstrating, I think I've, there's a video on uh, YouTube about this style or type of approach to BVACs. Um, again, I've sort of modified a couple things to make it my own and make it work for me better. Um, but this BVAC has actually lasted me for the better part of seven to 10 years. It, when I built this my first year in beekeeping, because I wanted to, to eventually start to do bee removals, I, I looked at what was online, I looked at what was available and sort of mocked my own prototype up. And it worked well for, it's worked well for me. It's done a lot of bee removals. Uh, there's a couple uh, videos on my channel if you scroll through and find them. Um, I'll put the links in the description below if I can remember to do that. But let's dissect this BVAC first and when we look at it, you can see it's actually made up of components that you're very familiar with, right? Beehive bodies, right? That makes it very versatile for the ability to use and, and move and you'll see why that's important in the end. Um, it's made of three Beehive bodies um, and you can put a, a different high body in the middle and we'll talk about why we use what we use. But the bottom is really just a medium. It's just a medium super um, that's being used. And the top is also a medium super. Um, there are a cap on the top, a cap on the bottom, of course. We have a, a vent in the front that can open and close. It's just a basic shop vac vent that opens and closes. And we have a larger hose that fits on this um, that, that be, enables us to reach up to where the cavity is. Um, it is a little bit wider of a hole, does allow for a lot more bees to be sucked through that hole, um, but it, it tends to pick up a lot of debris as well. Uh, within that this this box on top you'll notice something else familiar which is just a standard shop vac and this is a basic shop vac and i'll get the the horsepower of the shop vac but it's a smaller one you would use and a, and a sort of a workshop uh, not a larger one you would use um, and it's just the, the actual engine of the shop vac so if you were if you think about the canister you would get it's a little small you know two or three gallon shop vac and again i'll put a link in the description below to this shop vac so if you want to purchase it you can and build your own and all I've really done was take this and attached it, cut a hole in the, in the roof of this board and, and, and basically sealed it in. So it now becomes, this whole chamber becomes sort of the vacuum chamber, right? And in the inside, you'll notice that it's got a piece of pegboard that we've cut out uh, that allows to prevent, that allows the airflow to become a full sort of sheet of air pulling that, that, that pulling through the boxes, and you'll see how that kind of works together. There's some you know, sealant uh, along the sides or some cushion sealant along the sides to help create a good seal uh, for better airflow, um, as well as the front. I've used a, a honey gate, actually, in the front, and this honey gate can open and close. I can leave it you know, slightly open, slightly or fully open, and that helps me regulate the air pressure, and that's very important with both of these VVAC, VVACs is air pressure. Right, air pressure, too much air pressure, you can kill all the bees. You don't want to suck all the bees up and have them you know, hit that roof of that, that box or that vac or get stuck to where the, the suction is and then they essentially suffocate or uh, you want just enough airflow to be able to pull the bees in and even a little amount of airflow to allow some air, air circulation so they don't die inside the, the cavity uh, because it's all closed off. Let's go ahead and pull this lid off because this sits right on top. Um, and you'll notice underneath it as we dissect it, 
This is a very familiar component that I use in my apiary that many beekeepers don't, which is the screened inner cover. It works well for this as well. The difference with it has the notch. You have to remember in this setup, I put the notch up so that the bees can't get out once I lift that off. The purpose of this screen inner cover is really just to keep the bees in after I pull the back off so they won't come flying out. Let's look at how this is going to work as you continue to go down. That screen inner cover is going to keep the bees in. And then we have our frames. So we have our honeycomb frames that we have just using old drawn comb that I'll put in um, into the middle. Uh, sometimes I'll use different frames with older comb, making sure it doesn't have a lot of pollen or nectar in it. And also use foundation as well. So just a frame with standard foundation on it works just as well. Something to give that breakup of the air so that as the bees get sucked through this tube here and are pushed up into the box or sucked up in the box, they have an area to kind of go to a corner and, and congregate and either go around, cluster around their queen if you happen to vacuum in the queen. It just gives them an area. Uh, the other benefit of this is that you see it's a deep Langstroth. So I can take this box, pick it up off here, and set it right on my colony bottom board. And I can use it that way and then making sure they have the right frames in here to continue to build out, whether it be frames of resources or frames of brood, because um, I will do that after I cut out. And that's a whole other video talking about that. And I'll put a link in the description below to a recent cutout where we've used this vac and have done that. So you'll see how that works. Underneath, you'll be able to see the bottom is really just an incline that I've built. You can see it's just a standard piece of wood that I've made an incline inside there. You can see it's pretty dirty because of all the, the debris that falls down. At, the purpose for this is to allow the bees to get sucked up and to get up into the frames and the debris to fall down the bottom and the dead bees to fall at the bottom too. We usually have some dead bees on the bottom and some debris that will come in back and in, even some honey so it gets a little sticky in there, which makes it a little bit messy. A um, little harder to clean because it is wood, um, so the more times I wash it, the more times the, the wood starts to kind of lap and kind of fall apart. So I have painted the box to try to maintain and keep it, you know, as good as as possible but you know as I'm working the bees and I'm vacuuming in I'll have to climb down open this up close it open it up close it so again wonderful bee vac that I've made myself with my own hands that I've used for years and has done a great job for vacuuming out bees out of a cavity however there's some downfalls naturally you can see uh, even with the setup that I have um, as I mentioned it's wood so it may not last as long I have to continue to make sure I maintain it, right? In addition to that, it is very bulky and very heavy. So as this thing is together, you're gonna to take straps on the sides, bungee cords or ratchet straps, and you'll strap them together to pull this tight. So you have to have four ratchet straps on here, pull it tight, you gotta make sure that they're set up, and then this box itself is pretty heavy. That, you can't go up and down a ladder with. You have to leave that on the ground or the bed of your truck or somewhere where you're going on the floor. And then you're going to have to move it where you want it and basically take the lid off to reduce the weight and carry the bottom two boxes out of the house, out of the area where you're going to cut out. So it does make it really difficult for a single person uh, doing a job, a cutout, to remember to have to move this box, especially if it's full of bees, you know, a couple pounds of bees, three, four, five pounds of bees. It's even heavier. But it works. It's worked for, you know, seven, eight plus years. Done lots of cutouts with it, and it's lasted, knock on wood, right? And I'll still use it. It'll be part of my inventory of what I use for rescuing bees and vacuuming them out. However, um, I want to introduce you to the other bee vac you're sitting on the table. This is a bee vac that's going through a couple different generations. This is made by All My Bees, um, and they produce this it's the everything bee vac. And why, I guess why he would call it the everything bee vac is because you have everything you need when you're doing a cutout as it relates to a vacuum. Um, this is a well-designed machine. Um, as you can see, it's entirely lightweight. It comes with, uh, if you get the, the additional back straps that you have, you can actually carry this up and down a ladder on your back as you're vacuuming out the bees. Um, it allows you to be able to get those bees, bring them back, uh, and such. Now, this comes with a couple different things, little accessories that I would point out. Naturally, um, the vacuum hose that you see here is smaller than the one I use on my other one, which may be a little bit more helpful with keeping out some of the larger debris out of the bottom. 
Um, but you can also get an extension hose or a longer hose if you so choose from All My Bees. Um, and then this is also, if you notice, a, a larger bucket. So I think it's, I believe it's a six gallon bucket, maybe five gallon, but it's bigger than a normal five gallon. So it's probably six or seven gallon, probably six gallon bucket. Um, it has the trap in the front to be able to close it with vents that allows you to close it off once you pull your hose out. Um, and it allows the bees to have some airflow there. Um, also, you have the two different types of vacuum uh, points. Now, what I, I think all my bees and even Randy uh, McCaffrey uh, from Dirt Rooster has found that that small kind of slot, right, or that pinpoint circle for vacuuming out between the combs uh, is really, really helpful. When you get into tight corners, you need a smaller one and then you need a larger one for a little bit longer reach. You can do both of those. Um, it also has um, a different setting. So before we show you the inside, I'll show you up top here. This is where the vacuum is located, right? There's also a remote plug and a charger plug. So it comes with a charger, as you see here, that you plug it in, and they, they say that this lasts for several hours. So you wouldn't need uh, to charge it, but the night before you do your cutout, ensuring that the battery will last through the duration of your cutout. Most cutouts won't last longer than you know, five to six hours. If they do, then you probably need more gear than just this bucket vacuum, uh, and you'll probably need two of these vacuums where you'll need to get a battery, an extra battery, which they do sell, and you can get a charge, charge one while you're you know, using this one. Um, so the, the beauty of this um, is that it, when you can hear it when it comes on, it's not as loud as that, and I can plug that in and let you know the difference. I mean, the volume and the decibel rating on that is a shot back. This is a little bit quieter, just because of how it's structured, and it has it goes up and adjusts by just the dial. Now, um, all my bees recommends that when you're not uh, vacuuming bees, to turn this on. They call whisper mode. There's whisper mode, and all that's going to do is it's going to pull air through here and through and exit air out here to fill a light amount of air. And the purpose of that is to allow the um, the bees to have a circulation of air in here. Um, there's also a remote that you can plug in that he provides. If it's an option that if you would like, you turn the remote plug, remote off, plug in the remote plug if I can reach in there. Sorry. Making this more difficult than it needs to be. It looks like a large cat five, but fairly durable. You can clip this on your vest or on the strap and then adjust it as well. So as you're vacuuming with the hose, you don't need to worry about climbing down the ladder to turn it off and turn it on or increase it or lower the speed. You can do it right there with the remote. And of course it has um, a retractable element to it so that you can quickly clean it up and put it away. Um, it has a nice little pouch on the side as well. You can take your, your uh, vacuum components up the ladder with you wherever you're going. Let's take a look inside though. Again, here's your BVAC up top. Charge your plug if you need to charge the battery. It spins off, okay? There's your lid. There's your whole vacuum component. It's not that heavy. You can actually take that off to reduce the weight of carrying it. And you'll notice there's a screen tray in here. This screen tray keeps the bees from coming up and getting sucked, much like the concept on the box. If you take this lit screen insert out, you'll notice that there's some chicken wire that's spun around in here and it's connected in so it won't go anywhere. The purpose of the chicken wire is to give something for the bees to cling on to. As they get pulled into the vacuum, if it's a hollow cylinder with nothing, the bees are going to just spin around and they're not really knowing what to hang on to. Whereas if it gives them this double layer of chicken wire, and they can cluster in a ball on the sides out of the way and let the airflow flow through to the vacuum to give them the ability to not get clogging the vacuum um, as you're kind of vacuuming them up. Once you've finished your cutout, you can actually take and leave this off and just have it in your truck when you're bringing it home to allow you to transport the bees with some airflow. And then once you get back to your apiary, naturally you're gonna take this, you're gonna remove the lid and you're gonna dump them a candle right into a box. We'll dump right out of here. You can give it a little, like a bucket. That should slide right out into the box. A little bit more aggressive than 
picking up the super and putting it right on the frames. Um, but there are benefits and disadvantages to both. Both, um, I think that, that one weighs out another. At the end of the day, I think we have two different VVACs that accomplish the task of removing bees out of a cavity. Um, the, the everything VVAC, this is his uh, two and a half, two, one, two point five generation model. He's done a lot of modifications. He's a very smart individual who's built this, um, and it's a very durable product that I believe is going to be very helpful uh, for removals of bees. What I've found is that the two things that I run into with removals of bees um, is the, the transportability of the bees and the ability to, um, to move that vacuum where you are when you're doing the removal. Those are the two big things, I, in my opinion, have to be looked at when you're working or making a bee vac. This accomplishes both of them with ease. This one accomplishes one of them with ease. The other uh, is, is a little more difficult. So um, I think if I had to do it again, I would probably likely use the, um, this BVAC over here, um, the Everything BVAC, before I use my larger BVAC. But I have both in my tools uh, to be able to remove those bees. Um, I know this was a long video, so I really appreciate it. I did a lot of talking. Hopefully you got a good understanding of the two types of BVACs that I have here at Bingham Apiary, uh, as well as why one is used versus another. Uh, and hope it gave you a lot of ideas um, on how maybe if you wanna build one of your own BVACs uh, and use sort of the concept that I have here, which is the Colorado VAC style. Um, I'll put a link in the description also to the Colorado VAC if you wanna purchase one of them online, I'll give you a link to them. And I'll also put a link to uh, all my bees and these BVACs as well just so you have all the, the information you need to make that choice on if you want to get into removals. Uh, one last thing that I will mention, I know locally here on Cecil County, Maryland, uh, the eastern shore of Maryland, uh, Bohemia Apiary is going to start to a rental program on the, um, the BVAC, um, the All My Bees BVAC, the Everything Bee Vacuum. Uh, just putting it out there, stay, check our website for details. I'm not going to rent it outside of the 20 or 30 mile radius. But if you are local to me on the Eastern Shore of Maryland and you want to rent this bee vac for the day uh, to remove your bees and then return it without making the significant investment of buying one, we will have that uh, one available for you. Uh, it is a first come first serve or will be a first come first serve. So just another service we're gonna put out to the community of beekeepers in our area to help them if there are bee clubs or people that would like to removal. So please send us a private message if you're interested in doing that, comment below like share subscribe you know the drill right it's going to help us get this information out to the community and beat those youtube algorithms that that keep the smaller channels small uh and and, and doesn't help us grow where we can uh, continue to be uh, doing the things that we love to do here at behemi apia where beekeeping is definitely more than a hobby it's an obsession thanks for watching have a good day